So in my last video, we covered turn order, minor actions, and major actions for combat. But if you're trying to win a fight, it'd probably help if you knew how to attack, right? Greetings Vault Dwellers and welcome to the Wasteland. This is your Overseer speaking, Three-Eyed Townie, and today we're going to be talking about making an attack and dealing damage in combat for Fallout the Tabletop RPG by Modifius. Now this is part two of combat in the Learn to Play series, and there'll probably be one or two more videos coming after this, because combat's a big subject and there's no way I can cover it all in just one or two videos. So let's talk about making an attack. When you make an attack, first you choose your weapon, then you choose your target. If you're not currently holding the weapon that you choose, you're going to have to draw it using your minor action. Once your weapon is declared, announce your target. You have to be able to see your target, and if you're using a melee weapon, they're got to be in reach. Next, you can choose a hit location. While it's not required, you do have the option to choose a specific location on your target to hit. When you do this though, it increases the difficulty of your test by one. Once you have that all sorted out, you can attempt your test. Naturally, attacking requires a skill test, and the type of test that you do is going to depend on the weapon you use. If you're attacking unarmed, it's a strength plus unarmed test. If you're attacking with a melee weapon, it's a strength plus melee test. For both melee and unarmed attacks, the target must be within close range. The difficulty of an unarmed or melee attack is determined by the defense rating of your target. If you're making a ranged attack, the test you roll is going to be based on the type of weapon that you're using. It could be agility plus small guns, endurance plus big guns, perception plus energy weapons, or agility plus throwing. Similar to unarmed and melee, the difficulty of the test is going to be determined by the defense rating of your target, but you're also going to factor in range. Every weapon has a preferred range, and we'll cover what those ranges are a little bit later. Now let's talk about explosives. With explosives, you roll a perception plus explosives test, but unlike the previous weapon types, the difficulty of your test is not determined by your target's defense rating. This is because explosives carry the blast quality, which is a weapon quality, and we'll cover those more in the future. So with explosives, you start with a difficulty of 2 and you add the range, and this is because you're actually targeting a vicinity rather than the target itself. Next, you determine your hit location. If you hadn't previously used the aim minor action to determine where you're trying to hit your enemy, you would roll 1d20 or a hit location die, and that would tell you where you hit. Now Modifius has made a fancy d20 that has hit locations instead of numbers on it, but you can also just reference the table in the book and use a normal d20. Now it's time to do some damage. Roll however many combat dice are listed on the weapon type that you're using, and then add in any type of bonuses you get, action points spent, the total roll determines how much damage you can potentially do to your target before applying any resistances. What are resistances, you ask? Well, it's likely that your target has some form of damage resistance. This could be due to equipment worn, natural armor, or the genetic makeup of the character. Each weapon does a certain type of damage, and if your target happens to be resistant to that type of damage, subtract that number from your total rolled, and that's how much pain you're bringing to your target. If your weapon uses any type of ammunition, subtract that from your inventory. A standard attack expends one shot of ammunition, but if you spent any action points to roll additional combat dice, subtract one shot for every action point spent. If you're using a thrown weapon or an explosive, subtract that from your inventory as well, but your game master may allow you to go pick up your thrown weapon. These are the basic steps in making an attack. While there's more that goes into attacking, like determining your hit location, determining range, purchasing additional combat dice, dealing additional damage, damage effects, we'll go into all that in another video. It might seem like there's a lot to combat, but the best way to wrap your head around it is play a few rounds with an open book, take your time, and look things up when you need to. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you found this breakdown helpful. As you know, this video is a continuation of a Learn to Play series, and we have so much more to cover. If you don't want to miss when the next video is coming out, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications. As always, you can find me and the rest of the Fallout 2D20 unofficial fan community everywhere on the internet. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Reddit. We have a very active Discord community as well. And I'll leave links for all that in the description. 
And if you haven't already pre-ordered Fallout, the tabletop role-playing game by Modifius, you can do so directly from their online shop, and I'll leave a link in the description for that as well. Thanks again for watching, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and of course, I'll see you in the wasteland.